Newton's method. I'm not going to write any code for a while. I'm just going to tell you about the calculus, which was invented by Isaac Newton. Newton's method is just a technique that uses ideas from calculus. It's not the whole calculus, but it's an important technique because it quickly finds very accurate approximations to the zeros of differentiable functions. What's the point? Well, if you can find the zero of a differentiable function, you can solve basically all problems, as long as they are differentiable. And that's quite powerful. So Newton's method has a wide variety of applications in optimization and artificial intelligence. I'm just going to tell you how it works. If you have an equation, such as f of x is x squared minus 2, you're probably used to looking at the plot which shows you values of x and then values of f of x along this curve. You know, this is an interesting point down here, which is when x is 0. What's going on with y? Well, it's negative 2. But the really interesting point is out here. This is the point where, for some x, f of x is 0. That's what we mean by the 0 of a differentiable function. So it's some input such that f of x is 0. And in this case, it's 1.4142135.6. This is the square root of 2, which solved this equation, or sets f of x to 0. Because square root of 2 squared is 2, minus 2 is 0. Now, it's easy to write down this equation. It's more difficult to compute the decimal expansion of the square root of 2. Now, of course, you may have a calculator that's been doing this for you for a long time. But what if you didn't? What if you just had a bunch of integers and you wanted to compute 1.414213562, etc.? Well, here's how you do it. You use Newton's method. So one application of Newton's method is a method for computing square roots and cube roots, etc. So how does that work? Well. If I write down the equation f of x is x squared minus a, the positive 0 of that equation is the square root of a. So we're solving the equation x squared equals a by setting this to 0. Now, if we can solve this equation x squared equals a, then the x that we find is the square root of a. That's how we compute the square root. So what we're going to do is come up with a general method for finding zeros. And then this other step is to devise equations for which the 0 is some interesting number, such as the square root of 2. Here's how it works. Given a function f and an initial guess x, which is supposed to be a guess of where the 0 might be, you repeatedly improve that guess until you find the 0 itself. And here we've picked an initial guess of 2. So x is 2, and y is not at 0, obviously. It's way down here at negative 12. And we're trying to find this point here, which you know you and I can see easily is at 4. But computationally, we have to kind of try for a while in order to find that point. We'll compute the value of f at the guess x. That's just calling f on x. So in this case, we'd find negative 12. Then. We use this idea from calculus that any differentiable function can be approximated in a neighborhood around any point by a line, the tangent line. So this tangent line is a linear approximation. And as you can see right around the dot, it's pretty close to the curve itself. As you get farther and farther away, well, it's not that close to the curve anymore. But it's still a useful approximation. And we're going to use that in order to try to get closer to the 0 that we're looking for. Now, what we're going to do is follow this line until the linear approximation to the original function is equal to 0. In order to follow this line, we need its slope, which is the derivative of f at x. And then we compute this update, the Newton update. And we just keep doing that again. So repeatedly improve x is going to be a while loop that we just keep doing until we get the 0 that we're looking for. 
Now, what is this equation? x minus f of x divided by f prime of x. Well, it just means follow this line until this line, which is not f of x, but instead a line approximating f of x, has a 0. And lines are easier to follow than curves. The current point is at x, f of x. There's a length from 0, which is negative f of x. So that's how far you'd need to go vertically in order to reach the x-axis. But we can't move vertically if we're following this line. Instead, we have to move horizontally. I mean, we're interested in the value of x that gives f of x is equal to 0. So we follow the slope of the tangent line, which means we have a change to x of negative f of x divided by the slope. And we end up moving from 2 to 5, or in this case, forward 3, in order to find this point. And that is Newton's point. And there is Isaac Newton claiming his point, which we compute. The only values we need are the current guess x, f of x, and f prime of x. As soon as f of x is 0, or pretty close, then we'll say that we have computed the 0 of this function using Newton's method. And there's a rather clever visualization of how this works on Wikipedia. So here it picks an initial guess, x1, finds the tangent line, follows it until it reaches the x-axis, that's x2, and it plays the same game to get x3. And then once we find some place that's close here to the 0, you can see that it converges very quickly. And that's because the linear approximation is actually good around, in a neighborhood around the point that we choose. So as soon as we get close to here, then the linear version of this curve is pretty similar to the curve itself, which means that we can actually use it in order to find the 0. OK, so how would we use Newton's method? Well, like I said, if we want to find the square root of 2, then we write down a function, f, which is x squared minus 2. The 0 of this function is the square root of 2. We'll write down the derivative of that function as another function. And the derivative of x squared minus 2 is just 2 times x. If you've taken calculus, you know that. If you didn't take calculus, well, now you know that too. I just told you. OK, then we're going to write a function called find 0. I haven't done this yet, but I will. And what it's going to do is find the square root of 2, which is the 0 of f, given its derivative. So here's the pieces. Here's where we apply Newton's method. And this is the result that we'll get out. What if we want to find the cube root of 729? Well, there's a cube with volume phi, which if it were 729, we might want to compute the side length. And we do that by setting g equal to a function x cubed minus 729. The 0 will be the cube root of 729. I have to derive that, gives it 3x squared. Then I call find 0, and it tells me that the cube root is 9. So each one of these functions in Python corresponds to a function, or its derivative, expressed algebraically like this.